Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. In this video, I want to talk to you about resolving um, pain in the elbow when you are doing overhead tricep extensions. Now, I'm not saying that that's the greatest exercise that you should be doing uh, for yourself or with your clients, but I, of course, I see it being done all the time. There's nothing wrong with the exercise per se. And when I'm talking about overhead tricep extensions, it could be either with a single dumbbell, as you've seen folks do like this, or with a barbell or easy curl bar with both arms. Either way, uh, there is significant, potentially significant stress on the elbow. Now, I'm not even going to get into what happens at the shoulder because that's an entirely different video. But generally what I will um, see when people are training their clients or doing it themselves is they're overextending and uh, increasing a range of motion way further than it needs to be. And that's going to be basically tip number one. So there's a couple of tips here that I want to give you. So first off is range of motion. Now, just keep in mind, in general, the whole concept of range of motion, whether it's a single arm tricep extension, dumbbell curls, bench press, it doesn't matter. Uh, the misunderstanding and the reason why people will generally develop uh, chronic chronic issues at their joints or chronic even tendonitis um, and muscle overall muscle soreness is because their range of motion is being extended well beyond what the muscle needs when it comes to stress, right? Positive stress from resistance training, meaning that just because your, your um, elbow can move through an extensive, you see how far I can get my elbow down my hand way back behind my back, um, does not mean that when you're doing a resistance exercise that you use that as the criteria. So remember, range of motion is always based on the muscle, not the skeletal system. Again, just because I can move my arms all the way out like this in a, in a uh, dumbbell fly lying on a bench, doesn't mean that that's appropriate to do with 30 and 40 pound dumbbells just because you think you're getting full range of motion on your pecs. In fact, the reality is that from a biomechanical perspective, um, range of motion only needs to be limited to, uh, to the length that the muscle undergoes stretching before you start to put undue stress on the connective tissue, i.e. the tendons, just as a, for instance, before moving through the concentric contraction. And this confuses people because for the most part, true, effective, and safe range of motion is actually somewhat limited. I, I tell this to my live course students all the time. When you're doing uh, most of these exercises in the gym or wherever you're training, people will probably look at you and go, oh, he or she does partial range of motion. And my answer to that is no, actually what I'm doing is correct full range of motion. What you're doing is hurting yourself because the extended range of motion based on what the skeletal system is capable of is way too far and uh, way too stressful on the muscle when you are using um, loads such as dumbbells or barbells. So let me state that again. When you're doing, let me make it specific. When you're doing an overhead tricep extension, just because my elbow can go through, that looks like about, I don't know, that's about 100, 160 degrees, 150 degrees of extension, uh, excuse me, uh, flexion all the way down here. In other words, I can now move my elbow through flexion and extension at an extended great range of motion. That doesn't mean that's where I want to go when I'm doing my overhead tricep extension. In fact, that's one of the worst things you can do. So first thing is range of motion. Keep your range of motion limited to a point where the muscle is staying under tension, in this case, the tricep, um, and you are not putting undue unnecessary stress on the, um, on the tendons, connective tissue at the elbow. Now remember, I'm talking about the elbow. And think about it. Look at, look at how far I can get my, my elbow up and, and the, the stress that I'd be putting on my shoulder just by doing this. And then, of course, if I bring that dumbbell down back behind me, as soon as I get to about here, I'm telling you, I'm feeling, I already feel that intense stretch in my tricep. If I'm, if I've got 25, 30, 40, 50 pound dumbbell, whoa, that is an a undue level, an unnecessary and unsafe level of stress on the connective tissue. In other words, the tendon in that's uh, connecting the tricep over the elbow 
joint. So let's just uh, make sure we understand that. I'm not talking about the shoulder joints and the pain and issues that people feel in their shoulders and their neck, which I hear all the time as well. It's focus on the, the elbow joint. So number one, range of motion. Keep the range of motion limited to ensure that the muscle is being lengthened appropriately, but not too far. Um, the other thing about range of motion with an overhead tricep extension, again, whether it's dumbbell, single arm, or with both, is that at the top position, um, people will generally lock their elbows. Probably not a good idea. And I would not recommend locking your elbows. You know, one of the things, keep in mind, particularly when you're training your tricep, is that there's really only a few exercises, kickbacks being one of them, where I recommend that you can actually lock your elbow out, right, to full extension, only because there's no undue stress being placed on the uh, on the elbow joint. But in the case of the overhead tricep extension, and I'll just use the dumbbell as a, as a perfect example, is that when you get up to the top position, locking your elbow out, now the force of the, of the dumbbell in this case goes directly through the forearm complex, right? The radius and the ulnar bone directly into the, into the elbow joint. So the force of the dumbbell, which is going straight down, if you lock the elbow, you have now put yourself into a biomechanically precarious uh, scenario with your with your elbow joint. So I don't recommend that. So it's a relatively limited range of motion where you do not lock out at the top. The other reason is, is because you start to lose tension anyway in the triceps. So remember, number one, range of motion. Second is that um, what most folks have been taught, and I remember growing up, when I first started training, I was 15 years old, I think, 15 or 16, uh, when I really started training. And, and I would train with with uh, competitive bodybuilders. And what they would always tell me to do is with my arm up overhead, I should always turn my elbow in, elbow to ear. Like even I did, I remember, golly, I remember so, so often, elbow to ear and I'd have to, you see how I've got my elbows tucked in? I can't even get them back. But nevertheless, if I'm holding... 75, 100 pounds up here like this, or I'm holding a 30, 40 pound dumbbell, uh, you were told maybe, I hope not, but you were told elbow to ears, get your arm as close to your head as possible. Well, that's about the dumbest thing from a purely biomechanical perspective that I've ever seen. Because of course, once I actually learned proper science and proper biomechanics, I couldn't believe, of course, I couldn't believe a lot of the things I was doing, which is based on, you know, uh, competitive bodybuilding. That's not a slight on that. It's just that a lot of the exercises were not based on anything biomechanically correct. If one guy was doing it and it felt good and his triceps, you know, with, with about this big, everybody did it like that. Well, biomechanically, this is one of the dumbest things and one of the worst things you can do. And the reason is because down at the shoulder, you have three heads to your tricep. Three heads. That's why it's tri. Except so the medial, the lateral, and the long head. One of those, one of those heads of the tricep actually crosses over the shoulder joint and inserts. Well, it's the origin, to be honest with you, but it starts in the scapula. Okay. It's actually the inferior under part of the scapula, superior part of the scapula, and then up underneath on the on the outer crest, up and underneath that, that's where the long head inserts into. What Irrespective, what that means is that when I um, abduct my shoulder, I am stretching my tricep, okay? So the two heads, the medial and the lateral head are not being stretched any more than they, than they are normally stretched because they attach and, and their origins are on the humerus itself. But that long head, that son of a gun, that's what causes the problems. And the long head of the tricep has a... Uh, more appropriate, more efficient line of pull when the humerus, my upper arm bone, is internally rotated. So this is internal rotation, that's external rotation. Internally rotated in this abducted position. It's actually a much better position biomechanically force production wise than to externally rotate. And you can feel it when you do it. You were doing it and you're like, ow, ow, that hurts. Ow, that hurts. That's one of the reasons why we got to make all these modifications with your wrist and this 
No, 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 no. That's a terrible position. This is a terrible position biomechanically for your triceps, okay? Because of the long head. That is what translates into the shoulder pain. Uh, excuse me, the elbow pain. I said shoulder pain. The elbow pain, because when I do this, I have now stretched, elongated, actually put into a, a poor biomechanical position for line of pull that now is going to stress the insertion, the tendon insertion of the tricep um, itself. So when I do this, I get people telling me all the time that hurts my elbow. Now, combine that with this silly, totally, totally crazy extended range of motion. Get your hand to touch your back. God, that is just, um, that's ridiculous. From a scientific perspective, if that's what you want to do, um, because you've been told to do that and you think that's going to be effective, well, welcome to the elbow tendonitis club, because that's the only thing that's going to generally develop for the average average client, even, even athletes I know uh, deal with this all the time. So those are your two main things to keep in mind. One, range of motion. Stop trying to uh, stop trying to get your exercise to follow the the skeletal system. Just because your skeleton will allow you to move this way doesn't mean that's what's most effective for the muscles that are under load. Keep that in mind. This is resistance training, so it's under load. And for sure, don't be dropping and popping out of that bottom position. So that's number one, range of motion. Keep it limited to where the muscle remains under tension and there is no true danger on the muscle itself and the connective tissue at the uh, origin and the insertions. In this case, it's the insertion, the elbow, okay? The other thing, again, is the position or internal, ex uh, relative internal, external rotation of the humerus. Internal rotation. I know it looks like I'm externally, but no, I'm moving from a point of horizontal adduction to uh, full abduction, right? This is just pure abduction, right? Going up and out is abduction. This is shoulder abduction, okay? When I do this, I'm now in what we call horizontal adduction. So if I'm back like this, now I've got to externally rotate my humerus, eh, internal rotation of the humerus, right? External, internal. And you'll notice when I do this, boop, much more comfortable. Try it yourself. You know it's true because that's the way you try to do it. But then your, but then your workout partner comes over and they were reading some muscle magazine or looking at some video on YouTube. Wait a minute, you're watching a video on YouTube. But they're looking at it and they're going, oh no, get your elbows tucked in. It's like, come on, that makes absolutely no sense biomechanically. Um, so those are the two main, main issues. There is a third one and I'll throw in as a bonus. And that is the position of the elbow in relation to the head. The point is, is that when I'm abducting, I can abduct all the way up to almost um, 180 degrees. I can get my arm straight up. See, I can get my arm way up here. But is that the most effective way to do the exercise? And the answer is actually no. Now I will get at a caveat. If you can, from this position in a comfortable position, allow your arm to come down and get a, a, a significantly better stretch, fine. Just make sure you're not going through this extended range of motion because that's what's going to stress the elbow. Generally, what I'll do is I'll have clients just adduct slightly. And see how my arm moved out slightly? That's shoulder adduction. No issue with the elbow, no issue with the neck or the shoulder at this point. And I will have them get into a comfortable position that allows them to simply lower the dumbbell this way. It's the same thing with holding a barbell. See, if I do this with a barbell, you see my elbows are tucked in. That's no bueno. That's not good. You actually want the elbows to flare out much better biomechanically than doing it with the elbows tucked in. Remember, it's just biomechanics. It's called science. And the science of biomechanics will always tell you the correct way to do it. Make the modifications as you need to. If you don't want to do the exercise at all, <laughs> that's your business. It's a great exercise. Don't get me wrong. There are a ton of great exercises. And look, if you, if you found the video to be helpful, 
then please, in the comment section below, type understand, thanks for the video. Uh, please do a video on this. D let me know if you would like to um, know something specific about an exercise and how to manage and navigate through the pain that is sometimes associated with poor biomechanics. As always, if you want to become a certified personal trainer, qualified as well, okay, they got to go together, go ahead and click the, uh, click the link in the uh, description box below and talk to one of our um, admissions advisors to help you get in uh, into the course. And of course, we're more than happy to answer any questions you have. And please leave comments about additional material or content that you would like us to uh, create. Have a great week and we'll see you next week. Thanks.